What is up everybody and welcome back to another installment of our Buy for Beginner series. This time we're focusing on the filthy and uncivilized beastmen. And like all our other Buy for Beginner videos, we'll be focusing on three competitive army lists and explaining the best value for money options for the units in each of those lists. So, straight off the bat, being one of the Chaos factions in Age of Sigmar, most of the beastmen range survived the transition from Fantasy Battles to Age of Sigmar. With the only things that didn't uh, were the special characters for the Children of Chaos, which won't be bothering us, us as much, spoiler, as we're not going to be using those guys anyway. What we will be utilising, however, is the fact that a lot of the range is also not direct only from Games Workshop, which is just the icing on the cake, so we can be expecting to see a good few savings on the third party stockist front. Now, on to the main event. I'm going to go through some competitive army lists, and take you through exactly what you need to buy for each unit or character and give you the best cost I could find for each of them. The first list is going to be 1500 points, the second will be 2000, and the final one will be a Triple Crown Wargaming Event Standard, 2500 points. In each one, I'll try to keep as many of the units and characters the same so you can slowly build up your Beastman Force and not end up with units sitting in a case gathering dust by the end of it. Also, before we begin, it's also worth noting that we will be using the Triple Crown updates on the Beastman Army Book, in which units can take Marks of Chaos, and the units that are, that are allowed to are specified in Book 5 Archeon from the End Time series, and we'll be utilising this bonus a lot. The 1500 point list I'm going through today consists of a Great Bray Shaman, who is a level 4 on the Law of Beasts, with a Talisman of Preservation, and a Spell Scroll, and the Mark of Zinch, a Wargore BSB, with the Armour of Destiny, a Shield, and the Mark of Zinch. A unit of 30 Gore, with Shield, Full Command, and the Mark of Zinch. Three Tusk Gore Chariots, with the Mark of Sinesh. Two units of five Ungor Raiders, with the Mark of Sinesh. And a unit of 35 Bestigore, with Full Command, the Banner of Swiftness, and the Mark of Nurgle. Rounding out to a nice 1,497 points. So what's your best value options for the list? So, as usual, we'll start off with the characters in the army. And the first up is our Great Bray Shaman. Games Workshop still makes the pretty lovely plastic Bray Shaman model that was released towards the end of 8th edition's life cycle. It is, however, direct only from Games Workshop, so the prices are not going to be reduced anywhere. But it's a fairly reasonable price of £10, so it's not the end of the world. The more difficult prospect here is the Wargore BSB. GW no longer produces the BSB model, unfortunately, so unless you can find the model on sites such as eBay, we'll have to get creative. After looking around the various websites, I found a BSB model produced by Mears Miniatures and comes at two separate prices, one for $16.99 for a resin version or $14.99 for a metal version. Now, obviously, this isn't the cheapest for a single model, so if you're not fancying that prospect, then you could always kit bash the model out of some of the spare parts of Bestigor and gore that we maybe have that we may have later on in the army. So that's the characters done for the first list. So I'm going to go. I'm going to be moving on to the remaining units, and the first up is the gore herd. They are still produced by GW, and you'll get ten gore for twenty pounds. But more importantly, they are not direct only from GW, so we can look elsewhere for the models. And we look to our trusted boards and swords hobbies, third party stockists. They sell the box for £15.75, so a pretty reasonable savings of £4.25. So we'll need three boxes of them with a combined total of £47.25 for the units, which is pretty nice. The next unit in the army is a pretty simple one, and it's our three Tuscor chariots. Unfortunately, they are, only, they are direct only from GW once again, and it's £25 each. A bit pricey, but they're worth it in the long run. Not much more to say about them really, so £75 for the three of them. And our last core unit is our two units of Ungor Raiders. Now again, GW still make the Ungor Raider kit, and weirdly at the time of making this video, the GW website does not have the direct only symbol on it, but I cannot find them anywhere at any third party stockists. So we're forced to use the GW price of £17.50. Fortunately, we only need 10 for the army, so one will be enough. And lastly is our beastly unit of 35 Bestigore. Again, they are still supplied by GW, but are direct only again. So a fixed price of £27.50 for 10. 
So we'll need four boxes of these guys at a combined price of £110. This is a steep price, but I have left the best till last for the Beastmen. They have a very good start collecting box that has a Bray Shaman, 10 Ungor, 10 Bestigor, and a Gorgon slash Cygor for £60. Three out of the four choices here we use for the army itself, and I would recommend buying two of two for the possibilities of use in the next two armies. So if you get two of these boxes, you would only need to buy two extra boxes of Bestigor on top to fill out the big units, which is a quite a nice uh, solution. So going on the assumption that you bought the two start collecting boxes as, as discussed a second ago, the final price for the army is £297.25. And when compared to the price if all bought as separate boxes of £259.75. And so many of you will be looking at your screens in confusion, thinking I'm going crazy, telling you guys to spend more money than you need to. And you'd be right. If you're only looking for a 1500 point army, or a base to your army that is going to go in a different direction than what I suggest, then go for the cheaper option. It is a better idea entirely. But if you're looking at, up at the armies that I will suggest next, then go for the bigger price as it helps in the long run. Next up, I'm going to be looking at a 2000 point list. This one contains a level 4 Great Bray Shaman on the Law of Beasts with a Dispel Scroll and a Talisman of Preservation and the Mark of Zinch. Exact same again. And the same goes for the Wargore BSB with the Armour of Destiny, Shield, and Marker's Inch. A new addition is a level 2 Bray Shaman on the Lore of Shadow with the Chalice of Dark Rain. Our core section is pretty much the same as last time with a smaller unit of 28 Gore with Shields, Full Command, and the Marker's Inch. Three Tuscor Chariots with the Marker's Anesh. Two units of five Ungor Raiders with the Marker's Anesh. A unit of now 40 Bestigal with full command, the Banner of Swiftness, and the Mark of Nurgle, and will round out with a single Gorgon. Now, if you followed my advice earlier on, there is zero that you have to buy again to upgrade the army to 2000 points. The second box to start collecting contains your second Bray Shaman model, and that will be our level 2 Bray Shaman. And the first box will contain the Gorgon. That will be our brand new monster that will lead the charge of the beastmen into the heart of the enemy armies. Apart from that, there's really not much more to say on the 2000 point army list, as you get everything in the two star collect box boxes, as well as what we bought in the, for the first list. So, with some careful planning ahead in the 1500 point army, the price of the 2000 point army sticks around at a nice £297.25, pence, which isn't looking so bad now for this size of the army. Now we're onto the final list. This one consists of a Beast Lord with heavy armor, the Ram Hornhelm, the Steel Claws, the Dawnstone, Gnarled Hide, and Uncanny Senses with a Mark and Nurgle, a level four Great Bray Shaman on the Lord of Death. Yeah, we're going there. With a Talisman of Preservation and the Arabian Carpets with the Mark of Zinch, our Wargore BSB with the Armor of Fortune now, a Shield and a Mark of Zinch, a level one Bray Shaman on the Lord of Shadow with a Dispel Scroll and the Marker's Inch, a unit of 30 Gore with Shields, Full Command and the Marker's Inch, three Tuscor Chariots with a Marker's Anesh, four units of five Ungor Raiders with a Marker's Anesh, 37 Bestigor with Full Command, the Standard of Discipline and the Marker's Anergo on them, and we finish up with two Gorgons in red. Once again, there's almost nothing to buy extra for the 2500 point army here. The only extras that we need is the Beast Lord and the two extra of, extra units of Ungor Raiders and the second Gorgon. So let's get cracking into this. The Beast Lord is direct only from GW, unfortunately, and is marketed as the Beast Lord with paired Man Ripper axes. He is £12 and will be the best option for our Beast Lord. Not much more else to say here. As for, as for the next 10 Ungor Raiders and the second Gorgon, we won't actually need to buy them as they come in the second start collecting box that we purchased right at the beginning. As if, it's as if we were planning ahead for future armies. This is another fantastic aspect of these armies, as we really don't need to buy much else from the first 1500 point army. And that really is everything. The only additional purchase for our army is the Mighty Beast Lord, which will bring the total, from, total price of models in the army to £309.25. This is such an easy army to increase beyond the 1500 point mark. 
as a majority of all the units are bought in the first main purchase for the army right at the beginning. But as I said, you can easily use the 1500 point army as a base to build your army in any direction that you really want to go in. A small note of caution is bases. You will need to source these separately as all of the models are supplied with incorrect base sizes or shapes for Warhammer Fantasy. I found the best games works with equivalent bases are from Tiny Worlds Wargaming. They all come with a slot on the underside of the base to make magnetizing them really simple. And they also sell magnets and movement trays so you can get everything you need in one place. At £3.99 for 20, 25 or 20 millimeter square bases, or 14 99 for 125 or 20 millimeter square bases, and the same prices respectively for 2 and 10, 100 by 50 millimeter square bases or chariot bases for the layman both either with or without slots they're really competitively priced too so in total we'll need 74 25 millimeter square bases so we're going to get we're going to get the bulk amount of 100 20 20 millimeter square bases and five 100 by 50 millimeter square bases for the entire army which to equate which equates to buying the 125 millimeter square bases, one set of 20 20 millimeter bases, and three sets of 100 by 50 millimeter bases, as they are cheaper than the bulk purchase of bases. This will total out at 30 pounds 95 pence. Adding this to our army cost brings the grand total of the army to 340 pounds 20 pence which in the grand scheme of things is a very reasonable price for a very competitive Beastman army. Now this isn't the only way to build and run a competitive Beastman list, but I think this is a very solid core of an army. In my opinion, you have an incredibly strong core of infantry for you to anchor the main battle line, with two relatively scary monsters to charge right at the heart of the enemy and terrify the opponent's models off the board. You may want to look at adding more wizards or monstrous infantry, such as the bovine minotaurs. The unfortunate truth, however, is that the beastmen are a less than competitive army that needs a good head to make the most of them. If you can figure them out, they are a very rewarding army to play with. And that's it. I hope today's snippet has helped you understand what I believe are the best choices for a competitive beastmen army. And hopefully it's shown you little ways to save a bit of money too. If you've got any suggestions you think we missed, or if you want to know how, what we would use for certain units that are no longer available from Games Workshop, head over to any of our socials at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or email, email us directly, all the links for which are below, and we'll do our best to help you out. Join us next time for another instalment in our Buying for Beginners series, where we'll look at one of the other armies of the Warhammer world, or head back to the nice realm mustering ground, where you can find links to all of our other exclusive content. Remember to tag your friends and like, subscribe and share. Then head over to triplecrownwargaming.com and become a knight of the realm today. What, what are you doing, mate? Are you alright? Do it for Warhammer! <laughs>